Oh. All right, back in the shed again with my notes. Very professional, this. Yes, I've had a bit of a run of lousy weather for the last five days. This is um, my weekend off, so I didn't get to do a great deal. But it's, um, it is what it is, so I might have a talk about a few different things. So I finally got to use all my gear in a real sense. Over um, done a thousand K ride over three days, two nights out west, just before it got too cool, but it was sort of coolish in on one of the nights. So yeah, get a bit of an uh, update on how the gear went. Yeah, I have a bit of a look at this sleeping bag. Probably go through that first. That was um yeah, always, you know, sleeping bags, you just, you basically get what you pay for. Unless you're, you know, pretty lucky or hunt around, but you've got to, you've got to have a decent sleeping bag. It's just, and up in the mountains, like zero degrees is normal. So, yeah, good sleeping bag. If you're like me and not much meat on you, you um, you'll hate the cold. So, I'll show you the bag. Have a bit of a rundown. I'll give you some of my thoughts on the two nights that I finally got to use it. So the bag. So it's a Queezer. I um I ended up getting it from England, which was yeah I couldn't find any in Australia, which was a bit frustrating. But I read all the reviews from guys in England with them and what they thought. So I thought, well, if you can use it over in England, you know, the guys over there hiking with them and motorbike riding and whatever. I thought, well, it should be fine for Australia. <laughs> We're a whole lot warmer here, but it does get cold. So yeah, I ended up getting mine from England. There was no no options for the model I wanted in Australia. But I had a look this morning on Amazon Australia and they actually had these bags on there. And at about $50, $60 cheaper than what I paid. So anyway, we'll bust him out. So yeah, you can see it's pretty small. It's 1.48 kilos. And look, it's believed to be like the actual material it's made out of. Let's get him out. It's believed to be waterproof, but yeah, it's um, 400T ripstop nylon, which is um, believed to be a waterproof material. But don't know, I'm not going to get it wet, I'm trying to avoid that. But yeah, it come in a compression bag, as you've just seen, and it's, it's a little bit flat at the moment, because she's been in it, but it will thicken up nicely. So the foot sock area at the back here, at the back here is um, like plenty of room, you don't feel cramped. But the bag is rated between five and minus three. Um, so whether, you know, everybody's got different comfort levels, that's the thing, but for me, like where I went, it was, I think it was 10 or 12 degrees on the second night. The first night was about 15 and I was sweating. The first night I was just going, oh God, feet were hanging out, just trying to, trying to cool down. But on the, um, the second night, it was a yeah, clear sky, so it was a whole lot cooler. But it was still only, like I said, around 10, maybe 11. And this was like just beautiful, perfectly comfortable. But like I said, the rating on it's from five down to minus three. So yeah, whether I want to be in this in minus three or anywhere in minus three <laughs> I'd, um, is, a, is debatable. But you can already see how thick it is. Like, it is incredibly comfortable. Look at it puffing up again right now. Like, the most comfortable sleeping bag I've ever laid in. I like, just, it's just, I don't know, it's just luxury. Absolute luxury. So, yeah, I'm very happy with that, the comfort side of it. So, but what I've got, just because I don't like coal, I'll put them up here. So, I ended up getting one of these um, Coleman bags. They're sort of, they're like a polar fleece. They call it a, um, what do they call it, a stratus fleece. Whatever that is. I bought one of these little fellas. They're supposed to, that's actually pretty well what it looks like. Like the material is exactly that. So they're supposed to like add extra warmth to a sleeping system, a sleeping bag or whatever. But they reckon that they'll add around five degrees of warmth. But yeah, look, I just got it because it was cheap. I think it was $26. If I can get it out, it's um, basically a blanket. 
But it's in the fort, like it is a sleeping bag as such. It's, yeah, we'll get him out a bit. Yeah, like it's zippered, enclosed bag. That, you know, is designed to go in a bag. But what I was thinking when I got the thing, like I'll take it on a really, when I know it's going to be cold, but this would be, you could just use this as a summer sleeping bag. I'm sure in summer this would be bloody nice. This would be all you need. And, you know, you can't get much smaller and lighter than this thing when it was rolled up. So, yeah. Another option if you don't like the cold is literally to put a, like a polar fleece type bag in your bag. Or possibly even on the outside of your bag. Just like your sleeping bag inside this one. But either way, extra warmth for, for, for minimal amount of money. So, yeah. Pretty happy with this thing. So this Queezer bag does come with a mesh storage bag, which according to all reports, down sleeping bag should be kept not too compressed, like yeah, you know, over a long time. Obviously it's fine for a ride to keep them in a little bag, but if you're in between rides, this is the system apparently. So yeah, we'll get him in a minute. That. So supposedly that's a way to store them in these um, sort of mesh storage bags. Keeps them um, not too compressed. Yeah, so the other thing I want to talk about was the Trekology sleeping mat. I've never been a fan of these because basically if you get a hole in them, that's it, you're just laying on the ground. But um, look, at the end of the day, the other options are all too big and bulky or too uncomfortable. Like if you just sleep on like a yoga mat type thing, that's just far too uncomfortable for me. So I've got another one of these, another airbed, but this is the probably the best one I've had in terms of quality and comfort. And this thing is awesome. Um, it's probably been on about five trips now. And it's just, um, yes, yeah, great it's just the right size like I'm, it's not overly wide but it's just the right size for me i'll get him out but again like these things so the thing with this especially on a motorbike they just don't take up any room like this thing's well you can see the size of it tiny 750 grams so they do have something i didn't know about called an r value rating which is to do with like um coldness from the ground coming through them and I won't undo it fully because I'll show you some video footage but you get the drift it's only about as wide as this table it's not overly wide but it's um yeah the R rating on this one is yeah you know, they say it's between 1.6 and 2 so the higher the number the the more insulation they have so on that cooler night I went up there it um I could feel the coolness of the ground coming through the through the bottom. So um, there's probably a few ways to look at it, either buy an air mat with higher R value or um, put something underneath your bed to you know, stop the cold air or the cold rising up through the, through the bed and under your lower back really. So someone mentioned in the comments about keeping the cold from the ground, uh, you know, going through to you on the bed, uh, a good way to insulate is um, actually using one of those space blankets. So, um, yeah, I don't know if any of you guys have put a space blanket between your bed and the ground in a cool night. But if that works or you've done it, give us a yell because, um, mate, that sounds good to me. The other option I thought, but it's going back to bulk again, is, is those little fold up yoga mats. I know they work to get a real high insulation value. As soon as you touch them, you can just feel the heat reflecting back to you. They're good things, but they're huge. They're just huge and don't fold up. So space blanket, if that works, um, yeah, let me know and I'll give that a shot. Some of you would have seen the other day, I um, took the fishing rod. If you watched the old Smoky K Beach run, took the fishing rod. So I ended up putting, putting the rod tube on the bike it's only temporary. Zip ties here, zip ties up here around the rack, but mate, it's rock solid. 
oh, you got to snap the cable ties to get it off. And um, yeah, held the rod well, so I'll probably do a bit more of that. I've got a telescopic rod I could take, but it's just cheap, very cheap sort of a thing, and doesn't cast very well. Whereas I've got such nice tackle on my other gear, so I'll um, sort of chance it a bit and take some good gear. Cast better and far better to use. But um, yeah, we'll do some more spinning off the beaches or headlands, so uh, maybe a bit of bait fishing, so a bit of fun. Yeah, and also got, um, got some new shirts come in. Went through the last lot pretty quick, which is good. But I've got sizes medium to 2X large, and I've got a, a half a dozen or so hats, which one size fits all, they say. Um, so yeah, if you want any of that sort of stuff, give us a yell. Just in, you know, on Messenger and Facebook or something like that, and I'll, um, yeah, I'll get back to you and sort out something for you. All right, I'm getting out of here. I'll plan the next ride. Not sure where. I hope this weather sort of clears up a bit and hopefully go camping somewhere before it gets freezing cold. And if not, do some local exploring. There's lots to see. You just got to get out and find it. All right, guys. Cheers for watching. I will catch you on the next one.